Hey y'all, Billy from Perma Pastures Farm. Today is going to be an awesome day because we're going to show you what these pigs have made possible. Yeah, it's all about these guys here, what they have done. Anybody that's followed us, remember, go back and check it out of what they've done to the side of this mountain. Up here, there was nothing but all this thicket you see over here, but this invasive, nonsense Chinese silver grass that was brought in by the government all up and down this thing. And where there wasn't that, there was nothing but nasty thicket, thorns, everything you never, ever, ever want to deal with as a farmer, permaculture designer, homesteader, it doesn't matter. Well, today we have Justin from Metcalf Mills. He's our neighbor, he's our friend, and he's an extraordinary man. He's about to come out today, and it's one thing when William and I run a, um, a mini X or whatever, things get done. But you're gonna find out today how it gets done in the hands of a professional. Somebody who knows what he's doing. Because he's gonna come out here and he's gonna, what we need right here is something of a, almost a terrace, because it's too steep to put a swale or anything like it. What we want is a way to get up to a certain level. We had told you before where the pigs have, we made a video a while back, a while back of where the pigs were flattening off certain areas. And it gave us an idea to go ahead put that on contour and go ahead and plant around it. And that's exactly what Justin's gonna be doing for us today. So think about this folks, starts with these pigs, we go in there and knock out what they can't do, and then it goes down to our operator. All right, y'all, so Justin has already made this, I mean, and what he's done in like an hour and a half, 
is astonishing, especially from the hands of a novice. I'm not an operator. I'm an electrician. <laughs> I'm a permaculture designer. I'm a lot of things, but I am not what he is. But it is, it is truly a joy to see him work. Okay, here's one of the big deals in earthworks, folks. And this is important. As soon as your earthworks, I don't care if it is a swale, I don't care what it is, if you're digging a ditch, it is known in the construction world that if you want a guaranteed chance of rain, dig a hole and pray and hope that it doesn't rain and it will. But this is where we can use it in our favor. Remember, this whole side, this whole hillside was nothing but thicket, Chinese silver grass and all that. So what does that tell us? Whenever you see a bunch of, okay, let me just say it this way. When you see a bunch of thorns and thick, thicket, real nasty, woody, nasty kind of stuff, it's usually a solid indication that your soil's jacked up. So we got ways in how to mitigate that. But when you go through and you do an earthwork, whether it be this, a swale or anything like it, you want to plant immediately. And those of you who have been around a while, you know what I'm gonna say next. And it's a quote from Jeff Lawton. You wanna do it to inhibit unwanted weed regimes. So our go-to every time we do this sort of thing in the summer is gonna be what I got right here. It's a little long in the tooth for it, but it's cow pee. And the cool thing about cow pee, I know it's gonna do well in the heat. And here we are in the mountains, it's touch and go. It's always worked well for me every other place, but we're gonna find out here how well it works, especially now that we're getting on the shady side of summer. But in addition to that, along with it, buckwheat, yeah. So I always plant these two together. It's gonna to give that soil some structure. It's also gonna put some nitrogen down there. It's also going to displace any of those one unwanted weed regimes. Now, typically, is this necessary? Not all the time, no, because there are bigger plans that we have in mind for this. We'll cover that in the future, but the most important things, when you do a major earthwork like this, you have got to seed immediately. You wanna do it the very same day. Justin's down there working on another piece of something right now, so it's time for me. I already put this inoculant in there, which by the way, it's like a mycorrhizal fungal. You can see it on my hands a little bit. So we just basically mix that down in there. And all I'm gonna do is go up and down here from this point that way. I'm gonna start up top. I'm gonna go ahead, stick this on there. Then I'm gonna come through once I get this up and down on that slope, then it's gonna be time to go ahead and put in the buckwheat as well. And uh, we'll come back to it. But folks, remember, this is of profound importance because if a big rainstorm comes along two weeks from now, you got nothing to hold that soil in place. We got the uh, cow pea and the buckwheat up in there right now, but right now we, we didn't have enough buckwheat. I didn't quite get enough, which is something we'll remedy tomorrow. So anyway, on the top side, we know that we have in all that we want up on that side. So next thing we're gonna do is scatter mulch it with a little bit of that store-bought straw and we're just gonna scatter it on top of there. William's gonna work on that. I'm gonna add a few more cow pee on the bottom here because this is a spot that needs it most. So we'll go ahead and finish up the rest of that tomorrow. But in order to get everything knocked out tonight, the only thing left to do is scatter mulch the top. We'll scatter, well, I, maybe we'll go ahead and scatter mulch the bottom, it doesn't matter. Then we're gonna run this water hose and that'll be a wrap. We got this seeded and we got it scatter mulched. Now, only thing left to do is to go ahead and water it in. So we'll go ahead, probably freak Chloe out. So we'll just go ahead, water this stuff in. You wanna go ahead and get this done because not only do you have the issue of, um, of weeds, but more importantly, you got the issue with erosion. So folks, I mean, it's the golden rule. When you put in any kind of earthwork, 
you want to make absolutely sure. Don't think about planting this stuff a month later. You want to get onto it like, you know, as quickly as possible. So real quick, let's talk about what's going to happen with this area. This, remember, is not an area in which I'd really planned for anything more than, literally, folks, you come off the back of my house and we're in zone five. That's what it was. But the pigs made this an opportunity that we're now exploiting. And Chloe seems to like it as well. So here it is. We got this little terrace there and we got a little ramp that goes up it. In fact, I kind of halfway show you that. So you basically walk up this ramp like so, and then you're on top of the terrace. But now the plan for this is, is to continue a permaculture orchard right where I'm standing. Down below, we're gonna have some trees. Up on the top of this, we're gonna have trees. And we're putting all of this, folks, in an area where most people would think it's not possible. Well, we've already done a lot of stuff so far that most people say is impossible, so we might as well keep it up. So we can't, I mean, honestly, we can't thank Justin enough for coming over here and doing light years more than we ever thought was possible. The guy is a, he's an absolute dynamo with that thing. So it's, um, it's truly a blessing, truly, truly a blessing to have him to be able to do this. So that's where we are right now. We're going to put this cover crop in. We can't really mess with it until the fall or maybe even winter. That's when we plant our trees. But right after this cover crop, we're going to come back with comfrey. And folks, we'll do a whole nother video on that and why we're doing it and how we're doing it. So stay tuned for that. Till next time, this is Billy, the Permaculture Pimp Daddy, where pimp stands for permaculture is my passion. We'll see y'all next time.